call for restructuring is getting stronger and it is one again, once again on the front burner of national discourse. At an event recently, a statement attributed to the president foreclosed the idea, saying that there is nothing to restructure in Nigeria. A cross-section of Nigerians, including some state governors and groups, have disagreed with President Muhammad Buhari over this remark. According to them, Nigeria's federalism, security architecture, and revenue-sharing formula, among others, need to be restructured to save the country at this critical time. This is what we'll be talking about in the next couple of minutes. Joining me in the studio is the chairman and co-founder, MKO Abiola Center and Symposium Convener, Abdumumuni Abiola. It's good to have you join me in the studio. It's good to be here. Great, Mike. great. And uh, certainly, uh, Vice Chairman and Co-Founder of MQ Abiola Center, uh, Yemi Shoile, will be joining us on Zoom from London as we get along on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Y Yemi is there already. Yemi, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, happy to join you this morning. Exactly. I'm happy to have you join me too. All right. Now, let's start from uh, the, the studio of the woman. The, the point there is, when you sit down and watch our dear Nigeria in all of the things that are going on and what people are saying, uh, what really goes through your mind knowing that uh, there could have been an opportunity where M MQ Abiola, whom, who, who was your dad, would have brought some level of change to, to, to what Nigerians feel? Mm. Wow. Very good question, actually. Um, Mike, uh, if I might call you that, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to first of all express my condolences to the TBC family for yeah. what happened, especially the destruction of your property. Yeah, thank and you. It thank must you. have been very Sometime horrifying. Last year. Yeah, sometimes I say I do apologize for that. Thank and, you very much. Um, okay, you. so on to your question. Mm -hmm. well, I'm actually very optimistic. You know, right. if people are out there clamoring or trying to discuss things that they don't find are going right in the country, mm -hmm. then it seems like people are still interested in what is going on. If people are not discussing it, then they basically, well, they've basically lost hope. And what I'm trying to do here is to restore hope into the, in the populace to understand that the only way we can get things done and making true differences is if we engage and we participate in the process. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do understand that there's there's a lot of dissenting voices out there, but even in that, there's still opportunity to find solutions and to, and to move the nation forward by, you know, raw meaning Nigerian civil society coming together to solving some of these issues. So yeah, um, I, I, you, people can be a little bit, you know, you know, because of the negative aspect of it, people might feel, oh, maybe Nigeria might not be going in the right direction, but this, just the mere fact that we're having that conversation mm -hmm gives me a lot of hope all right so, so it's a good thing nigerians are talking about this yeah. all right okay yeah let me come to you on this uh the president in a statement recently credited to him said that there is nothing actually to restructure uh, I, I wonder how that comes to you though um i don't think so and i do, i disagree with um that i feel um you know with no disrespect to anyone the current government is is um, disengaged from, you know, the populace, especially the youth. Um, I feel, you know, there are loads of um, grievances um, from different regions um, of the country than we've ever had in the history of our country. And I feel um, there needs to be a certain level of restructuring. And for the government to listen, you know, they need to listen to the people, the crowd of the people. Um, you know, no nation is perfect. No nation... Um, and all nations go through challenges um, in their history span, you know. So, you know, in regards to Nigeria, I feel, you know, there needs to be restructuring. There needs to be um, the decentralization of power, you know. You know, state governments um, and regions should, should have, um, you know, a certain level of power to be able to um, harness their resources, you know, cater for their people, in the way they, they wish to. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, let me come back to the studio, Winnie. The, the point there is, a lot of people, in fact, it is agreed across the board in Nigeria that uh, the man, M.K. Abiola, would have brought a lot of change, a lot of difference, a lot of, you know, taking Nigeria closer to what a dream is, 
to the level where we wouldn't have been talking about the call for restructuring today. Now, share with us, uh, you, you were there, uh, although you may be young, but you were there, you, you shared the mind, you shared the house, you shared the ideas of whom M.K. Abiola was. If he, all of the dreams and all of that that he had for this country that would have made Nigeria a better place, share some of those ideas with us. Okay, well, um, first of all, I'd like to first of all um, just have you correct one something, a statement you made. Okay. You said Abiola was the figure that was going to change Nigeria. No, he wasn't. No, they, 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 the, in the minds the of Nigerians, people yeah. believed in a vision hmm. and they were ready to work with Abiola okay. to achieve that vision. I think Great. it's most important that we understand that Abiola's power did not come from himself or, you know, for or his belief in, 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 what, in his religion, hmm. but it came from the hopes of millions of Nigerians who believed in where he was taking the country to. Yeah. So, I do go back to say that the hope is still relevant because the people are still in Nigeria. Abiola is not gone. Hmm. There could be a millions of Abiolas all over Nigeria right now. All they just need is cultivation. They need edu they need to be educated. I've I've been very I've been very adamant on this issue that my father did stand for something. What he stood for can still be realized. But we uh, that were still alive today are the ones that will actually take those steps. You know. We can, we can sit here and discuss, you know, what is going wrong. But first of all, we need to be coming from a place of knowledge. And we need to be constructive in our criticism. So yes, I do believe that there might be places where the government should listen to the populace. And I also think that this, this relationship is also, it's, it's, it's both ways. And there should be places where the government should speak and the people should also be able to listen. I believe that Mr. Um, 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 the president, um, Muhammad Bari, has done the country a huge, a huge justice by um, by um, um, giving my father that honor because he didn't only honor Abiola; he honored everybody who supported Abiola, who laid, who put their sweat down, their finances down. Some people lost life, um, family members, limbs on that um, due to that sacrifice. So what I'm trying to encourage people to to see is that yes, things might be bleak and it might it might be the darkest. But you know they say that it's um, the dark. Uh, the, it will be the the darker the night is before you know the dawn. Exactly. The sun, yeah. Yeah. So the sun is about to shine. I think what we need to do now is just educate the masses, the youth. You know, they say that the youth are the are the future of the country. So I'm saying now that we need a national youth conference where the youth decide that future today. We need to know where we're going. All right. That youth thing, I'll come back to you to talk about that, that aspect of youth participation and, and where and what they can do to change things. Let me go to Yemi. Yemi, you were talking about the issue of um, restructuring earlier. L l let's put it in perspective now. When we talk about restructuring, uh, it, it, seems it, means, it seems to mean different things to different people and, and it's now turning to a controversy when anyone mentions restructuring. But from your perspective, when we say restructuring in the context of Nigeria, what really are we talking about? Um, personally, to me, I think um, restructuring is about um, redistribution of wealth, um, um, giving um, powers to different regions, different states to decide the fate of their um, citizens and their destinies, um, because it seems like we have in Nigeria, you know, there's been a lot of issues with having a central government that decides everything or most of the things. Um, you know, so like you, we all know, we've been hearing this, you know, over and over again, where different regions are saying, oh, this is, um, they're not being um, uh, treated fairly and all that. So my um, opinion and my own um, idea of, you know, we having a proper restructured um, country is whereby, you know, different regions control their resources, their, their, um, their, the fate of their people, their infrastructures, their, their finances, you know, just like the way we have in the, in the United States of America where, you know, um, most of these, these different states um, have powers, they have their own um, monotonous powers. So 
Um, that's my own idea of restructuring. It doesn't have to take too much powers away from the, central, the, the federal government. They will still be there to decide um, key issues and key policies. But, um, you know, have a sense of belonging. And to be honest, the, the, judgment, the, the, the argument, there's an argument for the fact that we already have a system where, you know, things should work. Because if you look at the system we have, to be honest, you know, we have a, a, central, a federal government, state government, and local government. And if things were the way it should be, you know, the system should work. But I think we all have um, the duty of care, you know, to hold our leaders responsible. Because what you find is there are a lot of issues in the local level that the people, the citizens, really, they don't deal with. You know, we all know our local government chairman. We know our governors. And these are the places, these are the, the stages where a lot of policies that affect our lives directly you know, are made, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of um, issues at local level are very important. Well, what, what we find out is these issues, we the citizens, we don't tackle these people, we don't, we don't um, engage them properly. We only start blaming the federal, we, we keep going to the federal. So we also have a, um, you know, a responsibility to um, speak, you know, hold our leaders, our local leaders, our state level um, leaders accountable for um, different policies and different issues. Like I always say, you know, we know there's a, a lot of issues about corruption in Nigeria. And I always say that it's not um, a northern leader that goes to the east to embezzle their funds or, you know, their, their finances. It's not a, Yoruba, um, a southern leader that goes to the north. You know, these are your people. These are your leaders from your own state, from your local government, from your, from your ethnic group. You know, so we also need to, even if there's a restructuring, we still have the responsibility to, you know, all this you know, leaders and our, our people responsible okay. for their action. All right, yeah, I mean, let, let me stay with you on this. The point there is you were talking about the issue of uh, uh, giving some level of autonomy to uh, component states. We, we had that in the First Republic between 1960 and 1966, and things moved on well. So it means we've tested it, we've we've tested it before and tested it, that system Definitely. before under the Definitely. parliamentary system of government. But yeah. now things are a little more complex now. We have states where we don't have regions anymore. We have states now where the states are autonomous. How more challenging would that be in achieving that level of autonomy now? I think, um, you know, where there's a will, like they say, there's a way. Mm. Already, um, these things are already happening. Like the, the, the case of Amotekun, the Eastern Police Network and all that, you understand? Governors and state leaders are already seeing and hearing the people's cry, and they're already, you know, I'm talking now in the in the area of um, insecurity. People are already forming. The regions are already coming together. The, the governors, you know, they're already coming together to do these things anyway. You understand? So I believe it's possible. It just needs um, a, a proper collaboration between the federal government, the state government, and the local government to to achieve this, and the people, most importantly, because. Without the people, you know, there's no government, you know. And like I always say also, and I keep saying, the youth, you know, the youth need to be engaged at every level of these discussions. The youth need to be engaged, you know. So it's very possible. Um, and, you know, the government just needs to listen to what the people are saying about okay. restructuring. Yeah. All, all right. Thank you, Yemi. Talking about youth, let's, let's get into that youth thing now. Uh, you have been very passionate about the issue of enlightening the young minds of Nigeria and, the, and Nigerians generally. What place do the youth really have? And what role can they play in the scheme of things right now? Well, first of all, you know, I really first of all believe that before you can act or do anything, you need to be informed. Mm. So I will first of all encourage everyone out there to actually look towards educating themselves onto the issues and the matters. So. Um, one of the programs that I've actually initiated under the MK Abiola um, Youth and Sports um, Development in Africa Foundation is to take the next 12 months, between now and the next June 12, 1993, and each month we discuss a particular issue. So, for instance, July will bring up the issue of the economy. Mm. We'll discuss these issues with the, with, the, with the youth, professional young minds who are doing extremely excellent not only in Nigeria, but also in the diaspora. And we don't, basically what we're trying to do is we want to have a, from knowing the problems, 
and having solutions or practical steps that can be taken to just get us to the where we need to be. Mm. So we're going to have all these documents that are circulating through social media, through um, media, um, traditional media like um, TV stations and radio. The idea is to let the people understand what exactly the issues are. Once we can do that, we can now, now knowing the issues, knowing the solutions, we can now sit down. I'm, I'm proposing also again, June 12, 1990, um, 2022, mm -hmm. where we all sit down as the youth, just to say, okay, well, this is the document we come up with. Make a del deliberation on that document, because like I said, 12 months, that gives us the time to talk about the economy, the education, healthcare, and um, sustainable environment, because I think those two are coming mm -hmm. hand to hand. Mm -hmm. Women rights and women empowerment. We can talk about the media policy. We see what's happening with the Twitter yeah. and other um, establishments. So the internal security, defense. You know, we, we would we would discuss with the youth because I understand that yes, we are the leaders of tomorrow. But leaders of tomorrow don't start discussing tomorrow. They start discussing today, mm -hmm. and that is my pitch. So yes, I see the um, the enthusiasm. Let me say that of young people requesting and seeking support seeking support towards you know a better nigeria and I, and, I, and, I, and i'm totally for that mike we all are for that we have to, we all have children we all want them to enjoy and we want them to succeed so my idea is we should take our time be patient understand the issues because you know not necessarily just the next election but mm. as we go along we need to be more engaging and more informed yeah. the only way we can survive and can we can move beyond where we are today is by informing ourselves first and then taking action all right so uh, at the end of because if you're picking each month to you know focus on some of these issues and then it culminates at the end june 12 2022 at the end of June 12, 22, when you would have discussed so many things month by month, mm. what happens at the end of it? So at the end of it, we were going to bring all that information together, okay. collect all that information, all the information we we're now making to a dossier. And, uh, and that dossier will be taken to our leaders. Okay. Because first of all, they are our leaders. And, they, they, and they're there to serve us. We as the youth have spoken. This is exactly what we want the country. This is what we've thought. And when I'm talking about having this conversation, I, I put a month for each of these topics. Mm. It's not going to be a one-day conversation. It's going to be a revolving door where people are going to banter about it. We're going to discuss it. We're going to say, okay, you know what? This idea might be good, but why don't we look at it this way? We can argue, but we can argue in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. The idea is to educate our people, to expose them to things that they might not have looked at. There are solutions. My father's always believed that Nigeria's problems will be solved by Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And not only Nigerians in Nigeria, Nigerians in that we're doing wonderful things. You'll be shocked how brilliant Nigerian people can be once they engage properly. This is not a money-making venture. This is about the nation as a whole. I am bringing this up to the fore because I believe that Nigeria is better as a united whole. Mm. The things that we are, comp that, we are, that people are agitating about are things that affect us all. Divided or united, it's still gonna affect us. So we might as well just stay together and solve the problems like grown-ups. That's what I'm suggesting. So we thank God for everything. And, you know, Nigeria is f worth fighting for. It's worth, you know, sacrificing for. And I believe that we, all of us, that what we do when we come out here and we discuss, it's only to move the pendulum forward. Mm -hmm. This youth um, conversation I'm speaking about is not a partisan thing. This is strictly a Nigerian thing. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Yemi, uh, Abdulmuni here is talking about the issue of getting youths involved in the national debate, whether at home or in diaspora and all of that. Now, looking at it from the perspective where a lot of young minds, uh, when we talk about unemployment, we talk about uh, out of school uh, children and all of that, a lot of people are facing different challenges. How do we get youths to have a buy-in and own this discussion that affects them. Um, thank you very much. Um, as Abdul Mumuni has said, you know, there's a lot of um, issues um, in Nigeria affecting young people, the youth. I myself have been a youth um, advocate, youth empowerment, youth development, engagement advocate for the past 15 years. 
I'm the founder. Um, I'm also the founder of Nigerian Youth in Diaspora Organization and Nigerian Students Union in the UK. So I've been doing this for so long, and we've been supporting, engaging Nigerian youth. They are very, very. Um, we are. I would say we are very, very disenfranchised. We are disengaged. A lot of people, you know, I would say are hopeless at the moment more than ever. Um, I feel the government needs to do more, so more. The, 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 there's so much unemployment in the in the in, in the youth um, circle, which is alarming. Um, also, I think the youth the youth are trying. They're doing their best because you know I just came back from Nigeria last week and every youth have are engaged. You know, have one form of business or the other. They're doing. You know, they're trying. You know, there are loads of um, constraints for um, youth development in Nigeria. You know, lack of power, jobs, you know, a lot of things that are not in place. You know, I've, I've been opportunity to travel, you know, to many countries across the world. And I've seen some countries, you know, so they don't really have much, but, you know, what they do in terms of youth engagement, you know, in the UK, for instance, I know the UK is more developed than Nigeria, but, you know, there are little things, you know, like youth centers, job centers, you know, um, a lot of things that the government put in place. You know, I know Nigeria, there's some of them in Nigeria, but they're not enough, trust me, with our, our population. You know, there's a lot of, you know, skills that, that needs to be amassed in Nigeria. We are very talented. We are very skilled in different endeavors. You know, sports, name it, across the world, you know, young people are doing exceedingly well in different fields, achieving. You know, I have loads of friends that, you know, at the top of their profession, their careers, you know, so... What the government needs to do is, you know, to, to sit down, you know, to, to, to get young people to actually, you know, draft these policies, to draft, you know, to listen to them what they want, you know, in a way that will be, you know, mutually um, beneficial, you know, to the nation and the, the people. You know, like Abdul said, we are, we are, we are, they, they keep saying, you know, we are leaders of tomorrow, we are leaders of tomorrow. You know, we, we say we are the leaders of tomorrow in action today. You know, these people need to give us the space, and also we have the responsibility as young people to to take the to, to you know to take our space. You know, don't wait. My advice for young people is always not to wait. Don't wait for you know for them to 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 you know to give you the space. Take the space. If they don't invite you to the table, you know, go to the cabinet, build your own chairs, and bring it to the table, or build your table, and have these discussions. Let's let's unite. We need more. Another thing we need to do is collaborate more. You know, that's one of the things that is lacking within our youth um, populace, you know, we don't have a united voice. Everyone is trying to do the same thing, replicate the same thing. We need to begin to come together. There's unity and strength, you know. These are the things that I've been able to see and I've seen working in, in, in different parts of the world. So we need to begin to collaborate. We need to, you know, stick together as one. One people, one, one young people to decide our fate, you know, and also engage the government. The government needs to do more. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, Abdul, the, the, you know, all of these, because you said by the time you package all of this, there will be an end, a dossier or like mm -hmm. a document mm -hmm. that you're going to, you know, present to government. But how, <clears throat> excuse me, how would you ensure that government and the private sector and all of those who are concerned have a buy-in into this idea? No, I actually, you know, funny enough, I actually believe that most of our leaders today are mm -hmm. Nigeria-centric. Yeah. You know what I mean, they believe in one Nigeria. They, you know, it's part of the, the oath of office they took. Yeah. So if the people are speaking, I'm sure you more more than less you find those who are who, who would support what we come up with. And then you have to also understand that what we're coming up with is just not, you know, it's a it's going to be an educated professional document. Mm -hmm. It's something that can be used and that can be even revised. So nobody's going to say it will be a perfect document. Matter of fact, even the document once is even established, I would propose that we send it to all the universities for proper scrutiny. Let, well, I would like the document to be scrutinized. The idea for me is to engage as many people as possible. I don't believe that we will have an issue with government is a listening. I, for, for one, I believe that the government that we have today is a listening government. And that is what government is, is there to do, to listen to the populace and take cues from them. What I'm proposing is a situation where we can, we can, we can direct this energy from the youth to something productive. Mm. We can't have a situation where you, we have um, situations where they're closing down airports. These are, these are uh, money-making um, ventures for the nation that we desperately need. 
So what we are suggesting is we have a situation where it's, uh, it, I basically would take it up because I basically believe in the destiny of the nation. And I want to say that, look, the youth are the future. We, 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 can, we can say the youth are the future of one, and we can say that the population of the youth are the future. Mm. If we can co coordinate, like Yemi was saying, if we can sit down and discuss the issues at, at, on face value, not that I'm looking at it from a APC angle or a PDP angle, but on a, from a Nigerian angle, what is better for me is better for you as well. And I think that should be our angle. Once we can sit down, synergize, assemble one another, once we come together and we come up with this document, I believe, before you know it, it won't even be me taking it to them. I'm sure that as we're even doing these programs, the, the powers that be will be listening in to see how the prog how progress is going. What I'm just encouraging the youth to do is to please join me Let's collaborate. Let's figure this out. Nigeria is perfect the way it is. It's not perfect, but we need to mold it. Mm. You know, we, we, everybody says that um, June 12 was about Abiola. It was not about Abiola. June 12 was about everybody that said no, just like Abiola did. Mm. So what I'm trying to say now is that, yes, we have a situation in the country where things might not be going accordingly. But we also have well-meaning Nigerians who can come together. Let's even leave government out of this conversation now. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Governments or not, you're still in Nigeria. So let's see how, as civil society, we come together. My father did not want for president and start helping people. He started helping people before he even thought about running for president. I think that's how it should be. We should have that Abiola effect. We should all think about my brother as myself rather than me, 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 and me alone. Uh, how long will we continue doing the same thing, looking for different results? I am proposing a different idea where we bring all these different energies into a, into a constructive solution for Nigeria. It, this has a potential of building team or nationhood or nation um, spirit. And I'm proposing this because some of the statements that I'm hearing from leaders, statesmen, are not kind of statements um, I, I'll be, I would like to hear, mm. and they're not promising. So I'm trying to change the narrative. Okay. All right. Changing the narrative. All right, Yemi, uh, before I let you go, uh, talk to us from the perspective of, like Abdul has talked about the issue of changing the narrative. In changing the narrative, we know how power is needed, authority is needed, and that, and that brings us to the issue of political power. When we talk about youth being in leadership, uh, is, is, is that where we'll begin to change things from, when we have more youths in the position of leadership? Um, definitely, um, having more youths in position of leadership would help, um, but that's not the ultimate solution to the, the issues. You know, I, I myself, I'm not in any political position, and I've been making, you know, tremendous impact, and I'm saying this with all sense of humility, I know how many young people are impacted on, and I know other young people doing the same, you know, lots of organizations doing, you know, a lot to improve the lives of Nigerians. So, um, you know, we can be in our space, in our local communities, in our grassroots levels, and still make impact without necessarily being in, in government. But the thing about being in government is that, you know, government has a lot of powers. You know, government decides a lot of policies that affects our lives. And I would encourage, you know, as many young people now to begin to get involved in politics, you know, at the local level, most importantly, at the grassroots level. You know, there's this saying that all, pol all, all politics is um, local. 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 You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So I believe, you know, and I'm, I'm um, obviously appreciative of the young people that push for um, the not too young to, to run bill that was passed, and obviously we, we all saw this, you know, saying changes to age limits of, um, of um, being good. able to run for certain offices in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But I still think the government can do better because in the UK, for instance, you know, we have um, councillors that are 16 years old. You know, I have a friend that was the youngest councillor um, in the UK. Um, she's Nigerian. She was 16 when she became a councillor. We have. Um, MPs that I think there's an MP in this um, current um, government that is 18 years old, you know, that's a minister, you know, so I think, you know, governance is not necessarily by age, you know, obviously there has to be age limits. When, when, you, when you start getting to 70 years old, I think it's, it's time to, to retire. So I was reading yesterday, someone was saying, what, what, at what age do our politici politicians retire, you know, and this is in different countries, you know. 
I think when you, once you start 1870, if it can be um, done or implemented in the civil service, whereby you know there are age limits to people retiring, then it should also be um, you know in, in implemented in, in government level, whereby you know these these are older citizens they should pass on the baton to the younger ones right. who have fresh ideas and fresh minds. Okay. All right, we have to leave it here now. Uh, Yemi Shoile, the co-founder of MQ Abiola Center, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, you thank joining you us much. from thank London. You. And uh, we also in the studio, Abdul Abiola, uh, chairman and co-founder of MQ Abiola Center and Symposium Convener. Thank you very much for what you do and what you're doing. And the project that you have ahead is really amazing. We'll certainly be keeping a tab on what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you very Mike. much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs>